Good morning. My children, my grandchildren, my friends from afar. It's kind of dark out there. I got up early today. I got up since uh, probably 3 o'clock. And uh, figuring to get up and do some reading. The old uh, rooster out there is telling us it's time to get up. It starts crowing around 3 o'clock around here. And uh, I took a read at uh, 21, chapter 21 of Jeremiah. My goodness, what a pathetic and wonderful chapter this is. Um, in the carnal, it's, uh, it's a scary uh, chapter. In the spirit, it's a beautiful awakening. And uh, with that being said, dear Lord God in heaven, Father, please watch over us. As we read in these scriptures, Father, keep us out of the ditches, be in our hearts, our souls, and our minds, and help us all in the best way that you will, Father. We love you, we need you, we believe, amen. That being said, 21 reads, The word which came unto Jeremiah. Here's the Lord talking through Jeremiah again. For the Lord, when the uh, king uh, Zedga uh, sent unto him, Pusher, the son of uh, uh, Melchi. Now, this, uh, these notes says uh, not the Pusher of 20, verse 1, that we just read about. This is probably a descendant or somebody with the same name. This prophecy is 19 years later. Uh, the uh, deportation in the uh, reign of... Uh, of uh, Jehoiakim and takes place, and well, so you you get the point. It's not the same guy we just read about. Probably could be a son, maybe could be. Uh, but uh, let's see where I was here now. Uh, Pasher, the son of uh, Melchiah, and uh, Japheth, the son of uh, Messiah. Um, I, these things don't uh, translate too well in Mississippi, so uh, you'll have to kind of read these uh, these names, and uh, you've, I'm sure you you know what they say. The priests saying, uh, "Inquire, I pray thee, of the Lord for us, for Nebuchadnezzar the king of Babylon maketh war against us." Now we all are in this war right now today. And uh, this King Nebuchadnezzar, he is us at times. This is our carnal nature. This is the carnal beast nature that uh, that we tend to listen to. And uh, spiritually, what we do here, in, a, in case I, I should say this for anybody new, we kind of look for the spiritual implications in these older scriptures uh, for what they may mean in the spirit. I believe that everything in this Bible means something to the carnal, and then it means something to the spirit. And I believe what this Bible is trying to get us to do is to write this in our heart where we can understand it in the spirit. Praise God. So uh, I see uh, Nebuchadnezzar in this Babylon. Babylon is confusion. And uh, when we live in the carnal, you know, we are confused. And when we uh, live in the spirit, there is peace and harmony and their God waits for us. And maketh war against us, so that uh, so be that the uh, Lord will deal with us accordingly to all His wondrous works, uh, that He may go up from us. Uh, uh, these people are asking old Jeremiah, who they were kicking around and putting stocks in the last verse, if you remember, uh, some years back, uh, scoffed him and put him in jail and treat him very poorly. Well, now that they've got the wolf at the door, and they're looking to Jeremiah to entreat, uh, to entreat for him and see if they can't get this enemy off their back. But uh, God is not only going to refuse to get that enemy off their back, he is going to join with them. Uh, why? Because uh, we, have, we have looked at God in a spiteful, uncaring, disrespectful way. And this is the carnal way. And uh, God is about to make this right in us. Amen. Uh, then said Jeremiah unto them, Thus shall ye say 
to Zedekiah. You send this word back to that king that wants me to uh, plead uh, for you uh, on your behalf uh, to God. You tell him this. Thus saith the Lord, the Lord speaking here through Jeremiah, God of Israel, behold, I will turn back the weapons of war that are in your hands, uh, wherewith ye fight against the king of Babylon and against the Chaldeans. Now, what is that weapon in our hand? Uh, in a carnal war, that could be a gun, a knife, a bayonet, or what have you, but in a spiritual war of spirits and principalities, that weapon in our hand the weapons that we fight uh, uh, with um, and the spirits of uh, uh, the war of spirits and principalities is our understanding of the Bible. It's the Word of God. This is our weapon. And God's fixing to turn it, and as we have been turned, and we primarily many of us see in the carnal. In your hands, wherewith you fight against the king of Babylon and against the Chaldeans, which besiege you without the walls, and I will assemble them unto the midst of the city. Uh, the good Lord is saying here that uh, it's our own misunderstanding, this, that, uh, that we, have, uh, we have taken upon ourselves to read and understand the carnal, and uh, we don't want to make that bridge, that step to the spiritual, to that Holy Spirit. Uh, this is what is against us. It's not the Bible itself. It's how we choose to understand and read the Bible. If we choose to read it in carnal, in our carnal nature, which is the nature of the beast, because a, a soul void, I mean a, a body, a vessel void of a soul is, uh, is a beast. Uh, as a matter of fact, many times you read beast in the Bible. I mean, it seems like I remember there was a king or something in one of these Bible stories that uh, he ate grass in the field and turned him into a beast of the field. And I think it even said it grew like ears and looked like a beast. Well, this is, this is the carnal nature. And uh, <clears throat> enough said there. I will assemble them unto the midst of the city. The city is Jerusalem. This is the holy place. This is where we gather to seek God. Uh, right now it's, a, it's being led and run by our carnal nature. And that's that thing that stands in the temple, which ought not. What's our temple today? It's our head. That's why we got those temples on our foreheads. And we call that our temple on our head. That's our mind. And that thing that stands, uh, the New Testament says, uh, Know ye not that ye are the temple? In spirit, that temple is us. It's the individual being who is looking to God. And that thing that stands there that ought not claiming to be God uh, that's I and ego and self, self-will. Uh, this is uh, pride is the uh, is the cancer of the soul. Pride is uh, what keeps us from leaving that carnal behind and getting on to that spiritual state. Amen. And uh, a friend of mine told me today that humble is the uh, humble humbleness is the uh, key uh, to get to that mountain of God. Uh, because pride is the thing that stands in the way that keeps us from having that spiritual revelation of Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, on with the reading. And I myself will fight against you with an... Let me get my page turned here. With an outstretched hand and with a strong arm. That same, That strong arm is the same is that carnal understanding, the weapon he's going to turn against us through our carnality. It's this Bible. This is all we have, people, right here. Uh, the Word of God. Uh, for good or bad and everything in between. If we read it in the carnal, it's bad for us spiritually. It's good for us to get our start in the carnal as we must. But we must make that bridge, that leap from carnal understanding to spiritual revelation. Amen. So this Bible is a strong arm, uh, just as Jesus Christ is. Jesus Christ said he is the word. Lo, I come in the volume of the book. Amen. Even in anger, God is uh, He's getting pretty uh, ticked off because we keep choosing to see things according to the flesh brain and not the spiritual heart. And in fury and in great wrath, in, uh, 
You ever seen somebody come to the uh, being pulled in by the Lord after they've had a, a particularly nasty life? You ever seen how they cry? You ever seen how they're broken? You ever seen how somebody can win through losing? Uh, this is how God takes us. God is a consuming fire. Amen. And I will smite the inhabitants of this city, both man and beast. There's that word beast. And I say, some men are beasts. Uh, void of spirit, they are left with only the beast nature. Everybody talks about the beast system and the beast this and the beast that, beast that from this Bible. Uh, you're looking at it. We are all this beast. All we got to do is think with our carnal hearts and uh, not think with our spiritual hearts. And there you have instant beast. Uh, but just add water. Uh, to that uh, cake mix and uh, see what you end up with. Uh, that beast can become a living soul, a living saved thing from Jesus Christ and the blood on that cross. Amen. They shall die at great pestilence. They shall die of a great pestilence. And afterward, uh, saith the Lord, I will deliver Zedekiah, king of Judah, and his servants, and the people and such are uh, left in the city from the pestilence, uh, from the sword, and from the famine unto the hand of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon. And if you want to be delivered in the hand of Babylon, all you have to do is refuse that revelation of Jesus Christ and uh, walk in the nature of that uh, carnal until your end of your days. This is Babylon confusion and into the hand of their enemies and into the hand of those that seek their life this is what the carnal does it wants you to consume all the days of your life uh, uh, suckling it uh, instead of suckling these beautiful breasts of uh, the lord has given us nourishment through this old testament and this new testament we just have to realize that what breast comes uh uh, our salvation and that's the new the younger of these twins the new testament amen and he shall smite them with the edge of the sword curious choice of words isn't it uh, why the edge of the sword because the edge is the part of the sword that's the business end of it this is the sharpened part how do we get sharp this is the elect uh, the edge of the sword is what uh makes a sword have its uh its uh cutting ability and if uh if you want to be any part of this sword of the lord this word of god if you want to be in this book it's best to be uh, honed to a fine sharp edge amen uh, of this sword he shall not spare them neither have pity nor mercy now back in the old days talking to us in the carnal story of this uh, that actually happened in physical blood uh, through uh, physical people uh, it's talking about you know people being laid waste by an enemy if we read this in the spirit this edged sword this word of god is our sword this is what we do battle with and we got a good honed edge on that sword uh, then we can cut through both ways quite easily and uh, this is that spirit of the lord jesus christ this is how he talks this is how he moves amen edge of the sword he shall spare them uh, uh, he shall not spare them neither have pity nor have mercy you can look at this as our carnal nature there is a day of reckoning coming and uh, there ain't going to be no pity having that that carnal uh, way of living is going to give way to the spirit amen in good time or in bad time it's coming we can hold it off as long as we can as long as our carnal nature wants to fight for its survival he can hold off a good long time. Some people read this sword, this word of God, until they're 90 years old and never make it out of that carnal understanding because they just don't want to make that bridge between carnal and spiritual. But it's coming. Don't worry. Trust the plan. God's got a good one. Amen. And unto this people thou shalt say, Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I set before you a way of life. And the way of death. What does this mean? He sets before you the way of life and the way of death. That's what is set before you? What's before you right now? 
What are your eyes on right now this instant? It's on this page of this Bible. This page of this Bible can be the way of life. It can be the way of death. The choice is ours. We can read it in the carnal and keep our mean spiritedness and our way, our flesh way of thinking. Or we can read it in the spirit of Je uh, Jesus Christ. Uh, can touch us and we can receive that and it becomes the way of life. He that abideth in this city shall die by the sword. Uh, this can be a good thing if we think about this in the, in the uh, spiritual. Because when you die uh, by the sword, that means you're going to give way to that spiritual revelation of Jesus Christ. Amen. And by the famine... This famine is when we don't understand the Word of God because we read it only in the carnal. There's a great famine. This Bible always talks about a famine that's coming, and that famine is uh, for the reading of God's Word, and then the understanding of it. How many times have you read so many parts of this Bible that you just don't understand? It's talking. I heard a friend of mine tell me one time his mother reads the Bible to him, and she told him she was blind to it. Now, that means she didn't understand it. But my friend was making her read the Bible to him anyway. And, uh, and this is the first step to gaining spiritual understanding. The first step to that is gaining carnal understanding. We've got to go through the both processes uh, to get where we need to be. And by the pestilence. This is uh, bad actions in our lives. Without the understanding of the Word of God, we make bad, constant bad decisions. And we're constantly plagued in the carnal, are we not? There's drunken, there's uh, dope, there's bad choices, money decisions, there's all of these bad decisions in life. It's a pestilence. Uh, but he that goeth out and uh, falleth to the Chaldeans that besiege you, he shall live. Now think about that again now. Uh, but he that goeth out and falleth to the Chaldeans, and besiege, that besiege you, he shall live, and his life shall be unto him far a prey. For I, got to win through losing, that's the only way we get there. I have set my face against the city, for, why did God put his face against Jerusalem? For evil, and not for good, saith the Lord. Why? Because if we stay in this carnal mindset, this carnal way of reading and understanding the Bible, we can still have our old evil nature, the beast nature, ruin, uh, not ruin, but uh, control our lives. We can go to church on Sunday and then go to the bar on Monday, as an old expression says. And this is not the kind of devotion and love and respect that God is looking for. God wants the kind of love and devotion that uh, we don't even want to go to the bar and be a drunk and look, look for idolatries and things in life uh, that are always at the, always at the uh, beck and call of this, na of this uh, natural world we find ourselves in. He wants the kind of reformation that takes place where uh, we want good things. We want goodness. We want spiritual wholesomeness and goodness. This is the kind of love that God is trying to bring us to. Amen. Uh, the Lord, let's see, and not for good, saith the Lord, it shall be given unto the hand of the king of Babylon, and he shall burn it with fire. Uh, being a carnal life, your, your woods are always on fire. And touching the house of the king of Judea, say here, yea, the word of the Lord, O house of David. Thus saith the Lord, execute judgment in the morning and deliver him that is spoiled out of the hand of the oppressor. Uh, uh, my good friend here, uh, Matthew Henry, states that he's telling us, get back to the ways of true judgment. Get back to the ways of spirit. You know, David was a man who got the uh, Lord and the spirit of Jesus Christ. He understood that spirit was love. And, uh, you know, uh, I could go off on a tangent here, but I won't. This video will be too long. But uh, David uh, was favored by the Lord. Why? David, the, the key of David that the in book talks about uh, is one of these churches having that key of David and was a good thing for that church. 
Now, what did David understand? What did he teach us in his stories? Uh, David was a guy like anybody else, and he, he messed up just like anybody else did. But David was quick to repent. That key that we have to have is a, a one of humbleness. That key is to repent, to not be pride-filled, as the carnal would have us be, thinking we know everything, thinking we're all that in a bag of chips, thinking we're okay when we're not because our woods are on fire. David understood that uh, he was going to screw up in life. He understood there was going to be failings that he would suffer and go through. But David was quick to understand that he needed to repent. And John the Baptist came with that key in his hand, repent, repent. Jesus came with that key in his hand, repent, repent. And uh, repent is the ultimate sign of humbleness. It is the ultimate sign of uh, the first step to forgiveness. Amen. Least my fury go out like a fire and burn that none can quench it. The Lord is an all-consuming fire because of the evil of your doings. These are the carnal thoughts. This is the carnal fruits off of the carnal tree. Uh, it is evilness. And uh, no matter how, uh, how hard we read this Bible, if we're reading it in the carnal, we are still in that carnal tree of life and not in that tree of life, that spiritual life. Now, one is a likeness for the other. Guess which is which. Behold, I am against the old inhabitant of the valley and rock of the plain. Uh, Matthew Henry, I'll try to... Uh, uh, I'll, I'll try to put the camera on his words right here. What that means is a beautiful sentiment here. O rock of the bay, because their rock is not our rock. Think, think about that. Saith the Lord, which they who shall come down against us. Uh, these people are saying, you know, they think they got a rock. They think that uh, they, they're calling on the name of Jesus. Think about the New Testament where Jesus said that people that will come to him at the end of their lives saying, Lord, Lord, look what all we did in your name. We prophesied, we did all these wonderful works, we did this, we did that. And what does Jesus tell them? I'm afraid you're going to have to go from me because I never knew you. Uh, this is the carnal mindset. This is who we're talking about, the people that understand things carnally. Uh, the people that really know Jesus, know Jesus in the Spirit, amen. Who shall come down against us, they're saying. Uh, they have a false sense of security. Uh, most carnal people do. So we need to get to that revelation of Jesus Christ so we can have a true sense of uh, security. Amen. Or who shall enter unto uh, our habitations? They're, they all think they're good. They're good to go. Uh, but I will punish you. Why is God saying this? Because he knows who he's talking to here. He's talking to the carnal us. Now, we have to remind ourselves that we are both these people, the carnal and the spiritual. It's a battle going on. It's a war. Uh, Sometimes we lose ground, but then we can always gain ground through that cross. Amen. Praise God. Praise Jesus. For I will punish you according to the fruit of your doings. If the fruit of our doings is carnal, uh, we got a reckoning coming. And all of us do, saith the Lord, and I will kindle a fire in the forest thereof. There's them woods on fire I was telling you about. And it shall devour all things round about you. Praise God. Amen. This is a good thing. This is our carnal nature going to be burned up by the spirit of that revelation of Jesus Christ. We're going to be called a fire. And we're going to be purified. Fire purifiers. This is how we get gold. We melt gold down. We, pure, uh, we burn away the impurities, that old dross, that old flux that rises to the top. And how we do that spiritually is we read these words of God, first in the carnal, then in the spirit. Amen. This is my good friend Matthew Henry. I found something interesting came here, um, which is a, um, and it happened in this book specifically. Um, some would call it a typo. Uh, I call it uh, a spiritual help. Uh, because you know, as you read the Word of God, you kind of you have experiences, and not all of them are uh, flat out done in uh, s spiritual uh, uh, revelation or divine uh, uh, revelation. Some of them talk to our carnal, and uh, this is what I'm talking about here. 
And you can see what I said. Note the upside down T on the word they. And uh, you can see right here, some would call this a typo. That T is upside down. When this printer was printing this book, uh, but it just so happens that we're talking about a day, a people. And that T is a cross, and that uh, cross is upside down there. And uh, uh, the word day, the letter T, it says, uh, God's in the details. I've always been a believer in that. Let me get back to where I'm scanning this in case anybody wants to read what old Matthew Henry has to say. But uh, there's a lot of upside down crosses in our world today. Now, where's that cross at? That cross is in our hearts. Uh, some people will wear an upside down cross uh, in that uh, goth movement in that dark uh, rock and roll uh, a group of people that wear these upside down crosses on their neck as if to uh, suggest they are the antichrist they are the anticipus and that I just saw that up that side down cross printed in that book and I thought to myself who is the day we're talking about here and, uh, the the carnal uh, we all have an upside down cross if we're reading the word of God in the carnal and not in the spirit and in by understanding that that revelation is when it turns that cross back uh, right side up that's our spiritual understanding grandchildren if you're following along reading along in this uh, these chapters you're doing Papa Banana's hearts very good uh, to know that you guys are are uh, on the trail of salvation. Uh, salvation comes uh, in the volume of this book. Uh, many people would tell you in the carnal that all you got to do, you can live a sinful life all your life and just ask Jesus Christ for forgiveness on your deathbed and you're okay. Uh, I don't believe that is the case. Uh, I don't think you have to read the Bible to be saved, but I, what I think you do have to be, uh, have to be saved is that spiritual revelation of Jesus Christ. Uh, there has to be true repentance. There has to be love. There has to be a conversion. If it's kind of like, uh, uh, think of heaven as a nice clean house with white carpet. And think of uh, sin and the world is outside of the house, a, a muddy ground. And uh, if we're going to be joined with God, and he's trying to bring in the people that's out there, and he's saying, come on in from the mud. Uh, we're going to have to wipe our feet. We're going to have to wash our feet before we walk into that beautiful, pristine house that God lives in with that beautiful white uh, carpet. Uh, we're not going to be able to just walk in there tracking up the place and then stinking up the joint uh, with our sin. So uh, God wants to convert us. And the best way that we can get converted is uh, is a uh, read this, uh, this uh, Word of God, this Old Testament this New Testament that we uh, that we can be converted. Uh, that act of uh, reaching out to God, the Sistine Chapel is I forget where it is, but there's a beautiful painting on the ceiling of a guy reaching out a finger and God reaching out his finger to that guy. That's mankind reaching out to God. Uh, that picture is a beautiful picture of the Bible. Uh, it's a it's a, a likeness for what happens when we seek God. And there is no better way that you can seek God than get yourself familiar with the uh, writings and teachings of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yep, this, the Lord Jesus Christ is this book. He wrote this book. He was there in the beginning. He was there in the now, and he is going to be there in the end. It says that uh, the heavens and earth will pass away, but this word of God will never pass away. And in that word we live. So I'm glad you're reading this up. Uh, this Bible along with my new friends out there that are that are uh, subscribing to the, to the channel and uh, reading along and studying. Uh, I love you guys as well as my own grandchildren. This is why I read this uh, these uh, these uh, words uh, every morning. To uh, uh, as I say every morning, I don't know if I'll be able to do it every morning. My computer is uh, getting kind of janky and acting up, but if it goes out, it'll take me a few days. To, replace it and sometimes there's storms and there's no electricity but if i can if i'm able uh, i'm going to read this thing every morning and i do this because i love you and uh, uh this revelation of jesus christ is a very important thing um, uh, and uh and the more that we can do as christians to perpetuate this uh this uh revelation of jesus christ 
the better off we're all going to be. Amen. The world needs Bible reading today more than ever. Uh, this world is a scary place. Uh, these chapters uh, talk about a uh, thing that is uh, very near close to happening. Uh, the world is, uh, is on the verge of a reset. The world is on the verge of some type of uh, uh, awakening. And it's a birth. And births are very painful. So uh, let's read the word every chance we get. Amen. The world will be a better place for it. And if the world won't, your world will. Because you start to live in your heart. And uh, that place can be wonderful. No matter what else goes on in the world. No matter how many atrocities. How many wars. How many young people are worried about uh, the draft coming back. And being sent off to war. All these things are real troubles. And real worries. They can be troubling. But in this word of God. Uh, these troubles can all be put in perspective. Amen. So enough said on that. I love you. Look us up. We're in the book. Come on back and have another read with us sometime, won't you?